Duncan was not the um, was not the um, quiet zone, so I'm assuming he's not probably not. He did the, uh, email me for the link. Hold on. Okay. Let me see if I sent it to him. Bring him in. Oh, there you go. I didn't want. And then listen, I can formally introduce Tyler as well um, in his new role. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll, we'll do introductions in, in lieu of just a formal roll call. We'll just kind of go around and that. <clears throat> I just sent Ellen a link. Sure. Let's see. Ryan Fuller, is he one of the mm -hmm. members? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yes. My name is Brian Plummer. I'm. Uh, I recently connected uh, through Carries. Um, I'm the chair of the Active Transportation Working Group just down the road in Dedham, um, and I just learned of your group recently. And um, I thought if it's possible to just to listen in and I'm just kind of curious as to what sort of thing you guys are working on um, in the in the town next door. Sure. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So um, I'll be recording. Right. I heard that. Cool. Yep, yeah, and I guess it's set up automatically to record. Perfect. Uh, time is 7.02. I'm calling to order the Mobility Planning Committee um, for Monday, February 12th. Um, in lieu of a um, roll call, we'll kind of go around for introductions, just kind of say your name and then what, um, whether you're at large or whether you're appointed from a, another authority. <laughs> no? I'm Mo Handel. I believe I was appointed by the select board. I'm a citizen of Needham. Mm -hmm. I'm Kara Slustig, the Director of Public Works. Tim Bolger, I'm a resident at large. I'm Susan Metropolitan, the Recording Secretary. Yeah, I'm Paul Moltz, I'm resident of Public Works. I'm Tyler Gabrielski, um, I'm the Manager of Los Angeles Failures, and I'm the current Director of Streets. Uh, Justin McKellen, uh, and I, I come from uh, the Transportation Safety Committee. James Goldstein, the Wheel Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, so, I, and although we had a one item on the agenda, I think we're going to do it to two, uh, two different items because we have two different um, minutes. Um, so, um, has everyone had a chance to um, read the minutes that came to the pre-reads? Um, so, we can start with the first one, which was 11-27-23. Uh, uh, is there any feedback, comments, concerns, anything we wanted to change in the minutes? I just have a question, if I might. Yeah, sure. um, page three, it talks about the downtown phase two project and that um, uh, I guess either proposals or maybe a report will be available this week. Uh, I mean, this month. Is that the case? Can you update us on that? Or is, is that coming elsewhere on the agenda? It's okay with you. I can provide an update. Yeah, or we sure. can... Um, so the we've had four of our pre-qualified engineers who submitted pro uh, submitted proposals. <laughs> Um, those were due on Friday, so we now have copies of those proposals. We are scheduling interviews um, that will happen, or presentations really, that will happen in front of the select board on the 27th and on March 12th, where they will sort of present their concept plans and their process. The select board will be providing some um, feedback, and I think we're going to be working weather permitting tomorrow to look at our evaluation criteria for that. But I think effectively we're looking for somebody who can take a, a, a firm that will take the feedback that they received from the prior uh, design process and then from the select board's review of that process um, and prioritization for the upcoming um, downtown and see how well they sort of follow feedback and guidance as well as sort of have creative thinking and then also evaluating their communications and outreach plan um, to make sure that we're getting sort of a good cross-section of a, of a project we're focusing exclusively on the Great Plain Ave corridor um, for this phase. And then when we do other phases, phases in the future, they will sort of be designed distinctly from that. And you make a decision this spring on which consultant? To yeah, I think the goal select. is to have a consultant Thank selected by the end of March. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or <clears throat> uh, edits? 
If not, I will entertain a motion to approve uh, the minutes of November 27th. So moved. So moved. No. So I have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any abstentions? Any nays? You need a roll call Barrett's? on this on the time break. <clears throat> actually, I don't know if there are any members that are joining us remotely. Uh, yep, actually, I see Duncan yeah. here. All right, so then I do. Or do we have panels? Or... Yep. So, yes, because <laughs> now I have two absent. Yep. May I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. If you have any other action items, we could do an omnibus um, vote at the end. Maybe okay. we don't have to do a roll call for each item. No, that's um, that's fine. We can do both. Both. Why don't we go over the second item? That's that makes sense with this, which is the um, the second minutes. So um, there was also we were given the minutes of January eighth. Were there any comments, concerns regarding those minutes? I have another question, if I may. I'm sorry. Sure. sure. I had to leave that meeting a little bit early, mm -hmm. and I see at the very end of the meeting the rail trail at the junction connection and potential pathways to development was also discussed. There's no other information here. I've been very involved in that project. Mm -hmm. um, can someone say a couple of sentences on what was discussed and where that stands? <clears throat> In terms of where that stands, probably the, the cares. Do you know officially? Or? It, was, it was me that made the comments. No. Um, I think it was just discussion about where we stood with that because of the meeting, the rail trail committee had asked or you know, sent a letter or yes. voted to send a letter to the mobility committee about prioritizing it. And I just didn't want to leave the meeting without that, without that hanging out there, like, what are we doing with it? So mm -hmm. just to bring it up and sort of mm -hmm. I think we didn't really move out on it or anything. Yeah, we yeah. kind of I left it there so. as, you know, like to discuss and, it so that it's out there. So I think we talked about the charge of this particular committee yeah. being more about the um, overall policies and procedure setting as opposed to specific action items. So when we get to the next item, talking about the transportation plan, which came up in the last meeting, I think the bike accommodation might be part of that overall transportation plan as how it connects in to how we would assume someone would get through the town. So it would be part of that planning process, but not the specific action items of development. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should send that back to advocate to the select board or other stakeholders for getting that project moving. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So specifically with regards to the actual minutes, did anyone have mm -hmm. comments, concerns, et cetera? So we have two sets of minutes. Um, do we have a motion to approve both sets of minutes? So moved. So I moved. Mr. Handel, do we have a second? Second. Second. Um, so we have to do a roll call. Who else do we have online? Just so, because I can't see up there. I just oh, Duncan? Okay, perfect. So we'll do a roll call. Uh, just to, if we could, um, the record can show that Duncan Allen is actually on uh, joining us remotely. Thank you. Um, so Paul Mota, we have a motion on the table for uh, both sets of minutes. We're just doing a roll call vote. Uh, okay. Just aye. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Tim Belgium. Aye. James Goldstein? Aye. Mo Handel? Aye. Duncan Allen? Aye. All right. And Justin McCone says the chair votes aye. Um, we have an um, unanimous. Um, so both of those carry. <clears throat> so here to agenda item, the next bullet is an update on the transportation plan scoping grant from uh, the MAPC. As you remember, it was in the minutes too that um, we would be looking at doing a holistic transportation plan. So Karis, if you could bring us through kind of a, where we are with that or is, or if there's someone needs to be. Yeah, Tyler's yeah. definitely. So I just wanted to recognize yeah. um, Ryan Quillen retired um, officially his last day of active work was last Friday after um, about 30 years working for the town of Needham's highway department um, and searching for his replacement. It was a pretty exhaustive process. We had the position posted for about six months and ended up hiring a recruitment firm. Um, we, uh, it's sort of a unique, what we're looking for in Needham. We're looking for somebody who can both manage the crews who are shaping the roads and fixing the potholes, but also think holistically about our whole infrastructure um, because we don't have a transportation planning department. Um, and so through that process, we ended up um, having Tyler, who was a management analyst at the town for three years, um, apply for this position. He has a background in um, city planning and transportation 
um, from his academic side and has obviously shown an interest in um, mobility and Needham here, both with his um, participation in the um, Transportation Safety Committee. And then what was the committee of committees we had last or two years ago? That's the created this committee. Yeah, mobility planning and coordination. Yeah. Yeah. So he ended up taking um, uh, that on for me when I was on um, maternity <laughs> leave. So um, has been involved in this process and in Needham as well as worked very closely with Ryan, um, our assistant superintendent um, Eric, and then um, our engineering division. We changed the title of the position to director of streets and transportation from highway superintendent. Um, when we had it posted at that that level, we had less interest in the position, and we thought that highway is sort of an antiquated term when it comes to talking about roadways in a in a community that really aren't highways by by that definition, and focus more on streets and transportation as that is really the focus of this role. So um, Tyler, before that, had been dealing with all of our grant applications. So um, as a perfect and seamless transition from his <laughs> old role to his new role was working with MAPC. So you just want to provide an update? Sure. Um, so last time we met, uh, well, I think you had brought up the technical assistance grant uh, from the MAPC. Um, we had a bit of a, a short timeline to turn that around, but uh, I think we, we managed to pull it off. And uh, we had a, um, so we submitted for a um, technical assistance with scoping the RFP that would go out to uh, get the services um, to do a sort of uh, road network inventory and classification, you know, help us come to um, common understanding as to uh, sort of the, um, the treatments in any given situation are, are sort of the a guidebook for how we move forward. And that's one of the things that we talked about in our, our previous meeting. Um, so we had a follow up call with Eric Barasa, who's the transportation director of our MNBC. And we kind of explained, um, you know, initially he was a little unclear if we were asking for them to do the plan or if we were just asking for help scoping um, to establish a scope. So we, we cleared that up and said that. He thought that it was a, a good idea and a good start and that a lot of other municipalities are coming at this with uh, kind of just create a bicycle plan for me without any, um, you know, this kind of groundwork to, to set standards, um, which is what we're, we're trying to do here. So um, he said that he thought that it was a great idea and that we uh, we should be moving forward. I haven't heard any updates uh, beyond that, but that was about a week or two ago. Um, it was a week ago, and I think we indicated we have a meeting scheduled in March, and we just asked if we would know before that meeting, and he said he would prioritize us to make sure we were aware before our March meeting. Yeah, he seemed pretty confident. Okay. So, looks like, you know, it's, it's got some traction to it. Great. It's great to hear. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, are there any other members have any questions, comments um, with regards to this? And, you know, um, because it kind of will relate to the next bullet item, but just wanted to see if there's any questions on this. How large is the grant application? So I don't know if it is like a, it's it, because it's a technical assistance grant. So they provide the deliverable as opposed to giving us yeah. money to then get a third oh, party. Exactly. In. It's like the deliverable they system. are the third party basically. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. So they're not actually performing the plan. Okay. So it's uh, the assistance and scoping. So I'm sure they'll be uh, we'll be providing them with everything we talk about at these meetings, and uh, they'll be working with us to develop that scope. Duncan, any comments? Or just you can use your hand if you want to. You have any comments? Yeah. Very good. Uh, so with thank you, Heather, for, for that. Um, <clears throat> Now that we know we, we kind of have a path, you know, we have a trajectory, um, there becomes um, some of the question about what can we do in the meantime? You know, what are some things that maybe necessarily aren't part of this this um, technical assistance plan that we can, you know, more of a lower hanging fruit? Um, and I wanted to kind of uh, bring that out to the committee to say, you know, knowing that just in the minutes we approved some of the goals of the committee, um, you know, um, what can be worked on um, in conjunction and parallel while this transportation plan gets developed? Um, well, I, we, I think that uh, it's going to be incumbent on us to come up with some um, categories of items that we want to look at because 
although they're going to be working with us to develop the scope, mm -hmm. it's gonna, you know, they're only gonna have as much as we put into it. So um, sort of, it might make sense to, to set up general categories of uh, what we want to address and then that can become more granular as we work with them um, through scoping okay. process, you know. Yes, so I'm just so trying building to- Building like a sort of outline of what the plan would look like. Um, that would be my approach. Sure, and I'm just pulling in from um, into their our list just to kind of figure out how that yeah. would be and how prioritize, but actually, until, until I find this, if any has any comments. So there, so they're just gonna, I guess I'm kind of a little confused about it. This, just they're gonna give us the scope. Like, what do you mean? So, so they're going to help us develop these ideas, right? We're, we're gonna have some sort of basic outline of what, these are the kinds of things we'd like to do, and then they're gonna help us um, actually build out like a a more detailed scope to so that the the firm or the consultant that's eventually um, dedicated to the project will know exactly what it is we're looking for. Um, they're gonna, you know, we have priorities, and they're gonna help us transform their priorities into sort of like deliverables. And this is this is what that that plan, like that piece of the plan, actually looks like. Um, so that's where the technical assistance comes in, because you know these um, they have a bunch of planners on staff. Uh, they that are doing this kind of work for many different municipalities. They have experience in scoping out these kinds of things. So. Um, it's really just establishing that uh, what do we want to get out of the plan so that they can help us drill down to what is the product. So when we talked with them, they had questions about our our scope that we had, you know, put in for the request. And some of those questions were, you know, are you just looking for like a bike ped plan? And we were really clear that we're actually looking for bike for all modes of transit and how they interrelate to each other, um, helping us classify our streets. So, you know, I think we talked about like what kind of treatment should we do on which street? And I think the question that came up in this meeting was, well, how do we know the street is this type of street or that type of street? And we don't really have an inventory of that or how, um, you know, we have some information about how like arterials and that sort of thing, but they're probably... 25 years old, the, the indication, you know, the, we know that roads are not being used exactly the same way as they were um, 25 years ago with ways and, and other um, uh, tools that residents use for utilizing our roads. So um, we sort of indicated that it was on the entirety of the mobility community. And we were looking, one thing that I think was a priority or that we heard as a priority was safety, that we were looking at how all these different modes interact with each other and how they can do so in a safe way. So we did talk a little bit about like the speed, the de facto speed um, in Needham versus what the options are and why we've chosen so far not to lower our um, prima facie speed. But you know that doesn't mean that we don't think there are certain areas where we might want to target to reduce speed. So um, really looking at it all systemically. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think had come up when we talked was um, there were some questions about how we communicate with residents. Yeah. Um, that I think are separate from the transportation master plan because they're not going to help inform um, inform that process. And I think I talked a little bit about in the beginning the challenges that we have. Um, so right now, effectively, if we were just doing normal roadway or sidewalk work, you might get notified probably one week in advance on a typical project. And that may be the first time that you hear about that project. So if we're just replacing an existing sidewalk with the uh, ADA accessible sidewalk, or if we are just repaving a road, that's the level of notification we give. Part of the reason for that is because weather is a huge variable in the work that we do. So that changes the timing of work. And because we have a plan and we can talk about that when we talk about the March meeting, but oftentimes that plan gets interrupted by a whole host of things. So this particular year, that plan got interrupted by Eversource using our capital plan for the summer as basically a roadmap of where they wanted to dig up for gas main um, improvements. So as we had planned out these roads, they then said, oh yeah, those would be, we don't wanna pay for moratorium work in the year after. So we're gonna go in and do that work this year, giving us no time to actually let those trenches settle and then do paving work. 
So we don't want to tell people that we're paving their street and then not pave it if we were to give them advance notice. And we always talk about like it comes up at town meeting. People want to know the streets that we have in the plan. And we're always apprehensive about putting that out there, not because we don't have one, but because certain things can happen throughout the year that might change. You know, the winter can be a certain way, cause areas to pothole that weren't potholing before. Um, and it might change our priorities. So I think that's always been a question that we've had. We, I feel like a week might not be enough time for somebody to deal with their sprinkler systems or even just like people are home more. So they're, you know, it's more of an inconvenience. Um, but also knowing that if we go too far in advance that um, we might give people bad information. I think the other thing that's come up is now that we are looking at complete streets, we're making a lot of modifications to people's frontage in some way, right? We could be adding a sidewalk, we could be moving a sidewalk, we could be adding more um, grass, we could be taking away grass, and we could be adding lining mm -hmm. where there wasn't lining. And what's our level of obligation to talk to residents about these things and how much feedback and input should they have? So, you know, we've talked, we did a project on um, Webster itself that I think was a very successful project. And I think that project was supposed to come up about a decade ago. And they didn't reach out to the residents and then they put out notices and the residents got very upset because they were going to be changing a roadway that I think was 36 feet to 22 feet, which is a pretty significant change. Um, and so instead, this time we took the approach of meeting with the residents. We had a neighborhood meeting with the entire neighborhood, did a walkthrough for about an hour, explained kind of the why behind the project got feedback from them. So there was a couple little adjustments, like maybe move a tree here or change a driveway apron here. And we actually ended up executing the project with very little with pushback. Um, so it makes sense to do that in a case like that where we're making a major change. If we're just adding paint, my inclination is to not have that kind of meeting, although that ended up going a different direction than I thought it would on Warren Street. Um, because we weren't making a permanent change. We were just simply changing paint. I didn't think it would require that amount of communication, especially because we're not talking about any of their property. We're talking about something that is 100% in the town's right of way. So I think um, we don't have like a formula right now on what that looks like. And I think maybe developing that might be helpful. So we know like in these circumstances, we know we talk to the residents in these circumstances, you know, if we're just replacing in kind or we're just changing putting something impermanent there as opposed to something that is affixed um, or really changing the, the look of the area. But there seemed to be a strong feedback that I got on Warren Street, whether perceived or accurate, that the things that we do to the right of way have a significant, have a perceived uh, value change in their property values. And so that was sort of the communication we heard, I, I haven't found data to validate that. But then anecdotally, I have talked to people who say they don't buy houses on streets with lines on them. So um, whether that has an impact on their property value, I don't know, but it definitely has a perception. I think people in general are resistant to change unless they know what it's about and why. And I think it's always better to err on the side of giving people too much rather than not enough information. And things that we think don't affect them are in their daily experience so yeah, even if it's unnecessary telling somebody that there's going to be a change goes a long way to getting them used to it and even gives them a chance to weigh in so i guess the question might be what's the format for that like is mm -hmm. it individual you know individual neighborhood meetings i think are helpful for specific items as we do more and more improvements it's going to be more and more places and there's only so much time as far as providing that. We do have this forum that we'll talk about, um, which may be an opportunity to do that in kind of a broader perspective, invite people who might have work in their neighborhoods to that meeting as, as part yeah. of that. Yeah. Any other feedback on this issue? <clears throat> I think as we develop, if we develop some sort of like standards or you know, template um, and maybe advertising that, you know, the website, PPW website or social media, um, just to like, these are the things we're doing here and here, and it's working and it's going to be coming to your neighborhood when we get there eventually, um, just so that it's all it's kind of out there and people are getting used to it. It's here, it's there, and um, that's probably the best way to just let people know it's coming. 
Yeah, and just to point it, mm -hmm. it's not just value, it's experience. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people care about their experience in their environment, in their neighborhood, and don't even think about what it's going to do to their home value. So more is better. I was just thinking in terms of communication strategies and sort of figuring out like how do we triage the level of engagement. Um, you know, I was just obviously it's just like a, a quick thought. So let's say you were to put up some sort of QR code on the sign or on, on the street sign or something, and you put it up for a certain amount of time, and depending on the number of responses that will sort of influence the level of engagement that the town puts in. Because if it's not, because if we're like bending over backwards to engage with people that aren't really interested or don't care or whatever, then sort of wasted efforts. Um, and so maybe it allows you to like right size the amount of resources you put for something. Um, and, you know, if people are feeling invested in something or concerned about something, then, you know, there's an opportunity for them to engage and, and for them to, to, to influence the, the procedure. And then in terms of the difficulties, and I totally understand what the scheduling is tough, right? And it's like, I think the best you can do, the best we can do is be transparent and say like, this is when we think we're gonna do it. This is the date. And then, you know, just, you know, you like, we have check back online 24 hours before the start of the date. And you know, if we haven't updated it, then expect us there. But otherwise, this is it. we're doing the best we can. And this is the information we try to update in real time. And I don't know, just that's there. So what I'm kind of hearing is like, and we can certainly like put this down in mm -hmm. kind of a SOP maybe for the next meeting, mm -hmm. but that there would be probably a written communication. So one of the things like I think a lot of people didn't like we don't have everybody's email addresses, for example. So if we're going into a neighborhood, like we really do rely on like papers, you know, stuck to the door, door hangers and mailings. Um, we could reach out that way sort of as a single touch to the neighborhood with sounds like more dynamic information that might be available online. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of an interesting way of tying those two things together. And then if nobody reaches out, you don't really have to do much. It's sort of a passive acceptance about the work that's being right. done. Right. Um, but if people do reach out, then you can kind of gauge whether or not you need to have a, a meeting on site. Mm -hmm. You need to give them a telephone option because there are a surprising number of people who mm -hmm. don't communicate through email or mm -hmm. QR code even. Mm -hmm. And then revamping of, of um, the website. And I know that I'm for a TSC, we're trying to revamp that as well, just to kind of have some more value. Um, and then we also have a central place to send people to, whether it's a keynote, you know what I mean, whatever the thing is. I really like this idea of no notification, um, and we can talk about how far in advance, and then gauging the level of interest. In our previous meeting, we spoke about this, and I made a comment that it's really hard to predict, I think, what's going to get people riled up or, or concerned. And so if there is some approach, as you've described, I think that's um, uh, a much more nimble approach and hopefully wouldn't tax DPW's um, uh, staff and outreach um, when it's not needed. Um, I would say one week sounds short to me. And I mean, is, is two weeks, you know, too long? Um, I wouldn't think so. But I also think when you do notify them in two weeks, we're going to have this um, planned subject to change. I mean, you always have to have some caveat in there, given what, what you described, Karis. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I believe that once we move our way into a transportation plan, there a lot of the other towns that are doing them are having like public meetings. Mm -hmm. like, Levers and dots, and I see dots everywhere. So, um, at some point, the, in, in that process would be like, what are people interested <laughs> in changing in their streets? And um, so we can work off of what people are kind of thinking. So, I think, I mean, that, that kind of leads up to, to kind of our next item, but I did want to say for a DPW communications policy, I think this is, this is great. Is there is there another? low-hanging fruit that's going to be out of scope of um, 
the the technical service grant that you know we could perhaps work on in the meantime because we have obviously DPI, how, how we communicate you know to what where why we, we can work on that but i just want to make sure we identify this um maybe you know kind of what a school zone looks at or is that something that probably technical um assistance might i'm sorry i didn't hear the uh, school zone uh, standard school zones and safety zones so um we talked about that a little bit at okay. tsc mm -hmm. um having some more information available online that could kind of be sort of the educational aspect of things. Um, I had a, uh, an email sent to me um, as part of a TSC petition uh, last week uh, from a resident who was concerned about speeds um, near the Mitchell School. Mm -hmm. um, and some, there might be a little bit of a disconnect between what is a school zone versus the area around the school. Um, you know, what is the actual regulation? How does that differ? Those are things that like mm -hmm. I think people so maybe it can kind of start as a sort of FAQ and then be built mm -hmm. out into something more um, comprehensive. But um, I think that's having having that might be part of building out like what we were saying. Um, this is what this committee does. These are our priorities. Um, here are some different things that you might be wondering about. Um, these all play into our plan. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's uh, maybe that's a little bit too TSC, but I think it's there's an overlap. Uh, it, an education component is something yeah. that we could, you know, how tactical that 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 happens. There's a balance between decision making and public involvement. And oftentimes we bring stuff to the public and the perception is it's too late to really change it. That this has been in process and nobody talked to us before. That's always a challenge. No matter what you do, it's going to be a challenge. But I think we need to keep that foremost in our minds when we communicate with neighbors. Um, and if we've made decisions, then we need to be clear about why those are made. So I do like a good example of standard operating procedures that we already have that I think are working well, which is the town has a program already for road rehabilitate for road um, yeah, rehabilitation. So when a road gets to a certain level of degradation, we have the different treatments that we use, whether it's paving or microsurfacing or um, rubber chip. And we actually had some pushback two years ago from a neighborhood that heard we were doing rubber chip in advance of us doing the work and they had a lot of concerns. And we actually had, I think, a very powerful neighborhood meeting and we explained why the town does not pave every road and there's cost considerations and environmental considerations um, and why the double rubber chip is a good product. We heard a lot of feedback about concerns about an application that had happened in a neighboring area and the way that that neighborhood was being utilized. And so we ended up coming up with, you know, I think even at the end of the day, they weren't thrilled that that was the product we were using, but I think they understood why we're, we were using it. Um, but um, we also were able to come up with a maintenance plan for them. So they understood the level of attention and detail we were getting to. So I don't think like, right. I would say, I don't think I made anyone on that call happy. I think at the end of the day, I only had one person on that call who was actually still opposed to the plan. I think they understood why as a taxpayer that, you know, you only have so many resources and we want our roads to be in good condition. And we've made so much progress in Needham mm -hmm. in the past 15 years on the condition of our roads. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not always, it's not always about listening to input in order to change a decision, but sometimes it's about changing approach or changing expectation so that way we can better meet that expectation even if it's not necessarily modifying the choice right. yes yeah. mm -hmm. and i think i would say at least when i think about like where we are and where we've come what ryan did when he came into the role with the way the conditions of the roads are so he basically had to create a plan particularly with the roadways to make sure that they were safe and elevated that and created a pretty comprehensive plan that's still following the new sort of step is now what do we do with those roadways that have now been fixed and are now functioning well and who uses them and how if we're if, uh, if that discussion is complete i just wanted to go back to what tyler was starting with and ask 
were we finished with that discussion about categories or did you actually want a discussion about uh, categories that might go into this plan? I, I'm a little unclear. Uh, that was that was a response to sort of Justin's question about what's the low hanging fruit. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily saying that we need to do it right now at this meeting. Okay. Um, I think it was more like, what are some of the things we can tackle over the next few meetings while we're we're developing that scope while we're okay. giving that information uh, to them to help us with. Um, I think it, uh, the the story you told about the um, the surface treatments. I think that that's kind of more of a that's, that's kind of an education component as well. You know, like why do we do the things we do? Having that transparency. Um, why are these decisions made? I think that could go a long way towards, um, you know, maybe somebody didn't, uh, if, they, if they're feeling like, okay, I didn't get notified that this was happening and I'm confused and I'm wondering what this treatment is, what work is being done, um, maybe that would kind of go a little ways to help bridge that gap while, so that, especially if we had, if we had something pre-prepared to link something to, to say, Okay, this is this isn't scary. This is why we're doing this. This is what's happening, and not just a flyer that says we're going to be d demolishing and replacing your, you know. Um, so something that's we could have like preloaded copy for different topics that um, could could help inform people as to what's going on. And maybe good. citing the overall plan so it has a context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You may know five to 10 years in advance that you're going to get a rubber chip in your road at some point. Right? And so people can find out now and know that sometime someone will come knock on the door in the next 10 years. Yeah. Is that because if it's part of a plan yeah. in place and people can see it now, they won't be surprised when it comes up. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the things like uh, Ryan did so well was kind of handling these conversations at hoc. But if we had something that kind of could, you know, it would it would make it easier for us to respond to the request for more information and clarification. And just add one thing before we move on from the maybe the MAPC transportation plan is that the climate action plan is going to have a bullet in it as well that is going to say um, develop a bike and pedestrian network um, by a certain date. Um, so it, it will come out soon, I think. I don't know um, if I've seen it, but um, there, there will be that kind of environment, the climate change part of the transportation plan as well. Um, just kind of reduce driving. Mm -hmm. so. We've got overlaps that's very yeah. well yeah. with this plan as well. We have safety and then there's climate resiliency and uh, both of those should go into our kind of overall goal of the mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The climate action plan should help us push that along. I think mm -hmm. both. Anything else? Yeah, I think it should really help. I mean, it seems like the Northeast, right? Um, the sort of prediction for there would be more rain here and sort of coming to, to fruition, right? Like the give us more, uh, a better story on replacing forest services or non forest services um, as a way to, to deal with that. Yeah. It's clearly, clearly going to be an issue. Anyway, so we'll have this as a kind of a standing um, item just to see how we can, as, and then as we get the technical grant update back, we can then to, to, to kind of go on. As as some of you or all of you, or maybe none of you are aware of our charter, we actually have um, two um, town-wide meetings per year that we um, we are conducting or we have to conduct. Um, it's the semi-annual meetings of, of the mobility committee. Uh, it's actually all of the, the, the committees with authority here, so it's the it's uh, the Transportation Safety Committee, the Rail Trail Advisory Committee, the Mobility Planning and Coordination Committee. Um, and, and really it's looking to, you know, kind of align some of the activities, do some public education and outreach, 
Um, and perhaps this can help with some of the stuff that we were talking about um, today, um, you know, with regards to kind of planned work projects. I know there's always, as Kara said, there's going to be some um, hesitation to say, June, we're going to do this road, this road, this road, this road, and then suddenly there's a hurricane or something that comes in and, and, and just kind of changes the trajectory of what um you know what the town is is capable of, of, of doing so but nonetheless um we march is going to be the year that, or the month that we're going to be um, doing our first one um i believe we were tossing around um one of the thursdays I think. So the 14th or the 21st um that we were thinking of yeah. how does that work here let me check and this would be at um at Powers Hall. Um and uh you know we'll obviously we'll invite as many people to speak social media campaign, both from the town as well as the DPW social media. Um is this the normal time that you do like your pre-update for the year, like what's going on? So our capital planning, so those are the reason those two dates were chosen. So our capital plan is due to the town manager in September. We effectively work on it all summer because the summer is one of the busiest times for us. So we, we kind of need to do it in little pieces. Um, so that's when we put our funding requests in for the upcoming year. Um, this is around the time where we try to solidify the actual work plan for the upcoming year. So we have um, this particular year, we have funding that is funded through an infrastructure article. So an internal funding program. Um, and we have a roadway repaving program, ro roadway surface treatments, um, sidewalk uh, and uh, accessible um, ramp program. Um, and then we also have a couple of projects. So we have Mark Tree, and then because Eversource came in, um, we have Detamav, and because, sorry, because the state is giving us funding, we have Detamav as a project. And because Eversource came in on Webster Street, we have Webster Street as a project. So um, usually we have sort of a hodgepodge of smaller projects that are repaving and resurfacing. Every time we repave or resurface a road, obviously that gives us a blank canvas to think about what that road should look like, at least from like a low dollar road diet conversation. And then um, we have a sidewalk plan to try to get greater connectivity. Usually it's dealing with areas that are uh, currently serviced by sidewalk that don't have ADA accessible sidewalk currently. Um, and then um, we have um, larger rehabilitation project, Mark Tree being the one that was in our plan to begin with as a large project um, that's currently under design. So this is when we start finalizing our contracts to make sure the contractors are lined up. Um, right now, one of the struggles that there is is that um, uh, granite curb uh, there's a shortage on granite curb. It's basically produced in the United States. Yes. The worker shortage has pushed out um, has pushed out the uh, ordering time. So we have to get the orders in like today in order to get granite curb at the 12 week lead time. Um, so this is usually around the time where we're finalizing our project list for the um, for the summer. So that was sort of why we chose um, February for that secondary list. Um, again, things could change April, May when if we get like a really bad winter, when the freeze thaw cycles happen, we could find that certain roads are heaving or are higher priority. But right now, I don't foresee that happening um, this particular year. So I think the list that we have is pretty fixed. So I think obviously a um, a presentation from you know DPW to kind of like what the, what the plan is, where we think we're going to go, perhaps we did last year, right? We did a public works forum. It happened to be the same day as the um, active sports recreation conversation. So it was when they talked about um, pickleball and skate parks. So all the people who are really interested in like government stuff all went to that meeting. And I think we had three people who attended, um, but it was recorded. We put it on the community channel. So when we pick a date, I will also reach out and make sure that we have it um, through their programming as well. So even if people can't attend the meeting, that that information is professionally recorded and then we have it documented for people who want to follow up with us later. And the intent once once the data is picked is, is to as many people from the rail trail um, you know, committee as well as, well as the um, um, TSC, et cetera, to part, help you know, to at least participate just even as a passive um, individual. And then what we can we can work on whether there's even a presentation from each of the committees saying this is what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the TSC, this is what they do. They, they you know, um, petitions from uh, the, the constituency to, you know, road improvements. This is what the Rail Trail Advisory Committee does, et cetera, the charter we advise the select board. 
Um, so I think that's kind of an education thing. I think it's great from a, from a first time perspective. And then um, obviously a, a, a kind of a, you know, where, where DPW is envisioning on going, but is there anything else that, you know, you think, did you go to the one um, two years ago or a year ago? Uh, I did not. I probably watched it, but yeah. I think, but I didn't see who was there. It seemed like there were more people there. But people were <laughs> engaged, I think. Yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. about what, what's happening. And that's a good, like, jumping off point every year if you, before the snow melts to say, hey, this is like what we had planned for the year. Mm -hmm. It was good to know, like, all of those projects, uh, especially if you're someone who thinks about all the projects that they're doing, um, you now know what's going on. So, um, there's no surprise when it shows up in the select board agenda or something, you know. Just... Any other comments? So, um, I'm trying to connect all the dots here. So, would this um, master planning process be introduced at that meeting as well or not? I mean, it seems that that's what the purpose of this committee is informing that process, I, mm -hmm. I, I think. And yet, we're talking about um, uh, an older model prior to the formation of this committee. Uh, I'm just wondering if if it's, at all, if it's also an opportunity to, to mention there is this master planning process that's going to take place, led by DPW, but this committee has a, a role. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that also should be a piece yeah. of it. Yeah. So I think we have to be careful to make sure that people don't assume we're creating a master plan of, this is what we're gonna transform the town into specific projects you know yeah it, it really is a starting point in inventory <laughs> rather than a list of projects so if we're clear on that so maybe it's complete streets i mean it's bigger than that because that's where the trail comes in yeah. and some of the other amenities but it's sort of complete streets and how are we going to categorize and broadly construct a framework in order to implement complete streets in a more holistic way. Right now we've been doing it in a really intersection by intersection yeah. Yeah. manner. Um, and so this is sort of looking at it more systemically, but more from a complete streets perspective. So I'm wondering if that's actually the language um, that might be helpful. And we can certainly do a conversation about what our current complete streets policy is how we've implemented it so far. We could even do a couple pictures of some of the intersections we've done or some of the projects that we've done to show before and after of what that looked like. And then what we're looking for is some standardization so we can implement those principles in a much broader and easier way than sort of right now where it's all one-off design. Yeah, I think that's that's a great, a great approach to that um, rather than, because there's a place for the public engagement and it's, uh, I think we're a little bit too early with that plan for that. So we don't want to uh, sort of get people to think that we're not taking their feedback into account when we're developing the plan. Because it's really going to be more on a, uh, this is more macro. And then once we drill down into the application, that's when the public feedback comes in. So I think if we make that distinction, that would be useful. Would this meeting have public comment Would it meant to be like the public is here to stress their whatever? Yeah, so I think the way we did it last time was more on the question side and the comment side. So I think if people had questions about our process or like I think we've had people approach us all the time like um you don't like us so that's why you're doing double rubber chip right like i saw you do paving in other parts of the town i know you can do paving and we have to explain well we have this process and every 20 years we alternate treatments you guys got paved in the early 2000s so now we're doing a surface treatment those neighborhoods were never paved so that's why they're getting paving but um so i think that's like a really good opportunity to answer questions i think maybe if we format the commenting in a productive way, specifically about the process or specifically about like what we could do to enhance or improve the process or even just take feedback back. Because um, I think like getting a question is like, well, why don't you just add a raised bike lane to every road project you do? We can certainly explain the cost and the design and the engineering and having to change the right of way and that sort of thing and, and sort of the approach. Um, so I think we can certainly take that sort of feedback back. Um, I mean, to be honest, I don't think we, 
I don't think I buffered it when we had the other meeting and we didn't have any problems with the technical. I think uh, so. having having some honesty and having some, you know, people like, oh, why can't we do, you know, raise bike lanes everywhere? Well, there's a there's a balance between having to remove, you know, 25 trees to 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 increase the you know the the width wide enough so that we can do a raised bike lane so we have to figure out you know what is the right what is the right way to go but to 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 be more honest about that i think is you know yes we'll probably have some people that will you know have some more questions and have some stress and passion but it's better than saying you know oh we'll put this we'll have a plan we'll have a plan to push this out you know whatever we i think it is because that is a very real you know, that's, I mean, with a tip that, you know, there's a section of, that, you know, there's going to have to be like 50 trees removed if we were to do that all the way down. And so it's not, um, it's, we just need, we need to be honest. And I think the the public will appreciate that. It's not a zero sum, right? There's always trade-offs. True, sure, true. Sure. So is the primary purpose of this meeting for these committees to coordinate with each other or to get public feedback? Because the way I read the charge here, at least in the agenda, mm -hmm. sounds like it's more of a meeting to make sure that the work of the committees is in alignment and that therefore it would be important to know who chairs the meeting and to make sure that whoever attends from the public understands the primary purpose of the meeting but also to have an opportunity to weigh in on issues that they may be concerned about mm -hmm. So I think the intent was right to coordinate it again with public works operations as well. Right. Um, and then I think it was also an opportunity for the public to sort of bear witness to the process. We just need to be clear about that when we post yeah. the meeting and when we post it, I guess. Yeah, no, and it's not, Um. you know, yes, this is not a, uh, I mean, we're not going to take a petition for DSC, you know what I mean, or whatever. We're not going to actually specifically talk about an issue that, but there's certainly, yes, there's this, there's this committee is there. There's a process to enter into that process. And, you know, this is how the town addresses these issues from a bottom up perspective. Right. We're, we're at this mobility committee. This is how we're doing from the top down. We come half, you know, we, we come in the middle. And that's a little, you know, kind of point education. But yes, I agree. So I can, um, so I guess I would say if the meeting is on the later side of March, it gives us some more opportunity to vet the agenda out in our next meeting before it's posted. Um, so that does give us, I'll just say the 21st might have an advantage in that particular way because our next meeting I think is the 11th. Yeah. Has um and any is that any issue with either of those dates the the eleventh the next time or um or the twenty first? I won't be able to be at the meeting, but okay. that doesn't mean you should on my account. And you'll be would you be here on the eleventh just because you yeah yes yeah, so yeah, 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 so that will you know your your impact will be on the agenda. Yeah. Is it also an evening meeting or is it during the day or what? what I think the intent would be to have an evening yeah. meeting. Okay. Um, we can do it at. I mean, I, I, I'm flexible. It's really, I think, when people can get here. So um, sometimes the advantage of doing things like closer to seven gives people who are commuting and more of an opportunity to participate. Mm -hmm. But I, there's no good time for everybody. There's so no. but it's really on. Um... My experience on doing meetings that there's never never a right time. But um, any issues with those with those times for anybody? No. Duncan, we, any issues with those? No, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm clear on the dates. I'm hearing the 11th and the 21st at this point. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, I just wanted confirmation of that. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm sorry. 11th for this committee's meeting and the 21st for the public meeting. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. And that would, yeah, that would be a Powers Town Hall. I think we're going to sure it's that open. Yet. And but, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I do think um, Mo has raised um, uh, a good point. The, the agenda description has multiple um, goals or purposes. So, um, if if there are multiple ones, let's just be clear about it and address both of them. If, if uh, at this meeting, um, if it's much more one than the other, then uh, make the agenda and the and the outreach materials reflect that. Because I read it the same way, Mo. There's really a couple things going on here: coordination among these three committees, and then. Uh, the DPW's agenda kind of and getting that out there. And, and, and that may be, you know, the theme for this, the March meeting. And then, you know, in September, it can be more, you know, this is where, this is kind of how the projects have, or, you know, are going to be proposed, you know, if we're going into the next, you know, cycle. Yeah. So I think the plan for the September meeting is that we would come with our capital, our proposed capital plan, as well as chapter 90 expenditures and sort of say, this is where we think we're, what we're going to submit and where um, resources are going to be. Like this particular um, fiscal year, because of um, at least as of today, maybe 
Um, the finance director has done his magic and found more funds, but the um, infrastructure money is actually not going to be funded for DPW, which is where the majority of our roadway projects come from. What we are going to do is we're going to tap Chapter 90 resources that had previously sort of been stockpiled for the past decade, specifically just for the downtown project, and use some of those funds to help offset the loss that we have for infrastructure so we don't fall behind on our infrastructure or just be using a different funding source. Um, Again, if the finance director finds money, then that money gets added back into our capital budget. Um, but when we put our budget together, we have um, uh, formulaic uh, projects that are on the roads and the sidewalks. And then we sort of have the extraordinary projects. So Mark Tree or intersection improvements, that actually is a large one because traffic signals are quite expensive. Um, so those items, as we sort of put that package together for funding, mm -hmm. would kind of go to those committees to get feedback on that funding request versus the actual implementation and construction that would be the spring meeting. So I think that was the rationale between the two different meetings. Would would the spring go over kind of the TIP funding and the TIP projects? We can certainly provide an update mm -hmm. um, on that. Um, that's how now. Yeah, we just submitted um they're like pre-25% process. Um, so we can certainly provide that update. Um, and it's possible by the 21st we might have an update on the downtown um okay. award as well. Okay. All right. Anybody have any other questions with regards to yes? Sorry, just one comment. I appreciated your comment about the complete streets. Um, perspective, and that, that's largely, if I'm interpreting you right, what the comprehensive uh, transportation plan is about. But it, it seems that there are other elements there, unless I'm not really understanding what a comprehensive transportation plan is. That's an important piece, but um, I, I'm assuming in your categories that there's going to be quite a few others. And we don't have to talk about that now, but I'm hoping um, uh, at some point we come back to that. So I think complete streets is a philosophy that could be applied to any street. I think what we're also getting from this transportation plan is like a better understanding about how our infrastructure is currently being utilized, which would sort of fall outside of that complete streets um, request. But, you know, again, in that categorization of like, you know, mains, arterials, neighborhood roads, right? Um, helping yeah. us better define what that is in Needham currently, what our roads are actually functioning as versus maybe what they were designed as. Um, and then helping us define what a complete street might look like in all of those yeah, um, areas. Duncan, yeah, I think that's Harris, right. I, I'm sorry. That, I, I really glad you said that because I, I get a little worried sometimes that complete streets gets doctrinaire and every mode has to have some physical representation and provision on every conceivable functional class of roadway. And okay, good. So you could have like a complete street that's a neighborhood road that has no, that has yeah. no markings, right? But you're and, looking and, at it from the perspective of all the different users. And, and, and the other big thing, my hobby horse, come from the other committee is, does it have a bus route on it or not? You know, regardless of its width or speed or anything else, you know, what, if you're going to try to have a decent bus service in terms of what it can, how it can perform, there are limits to how much of the real estate you can give away. Yeah, so that would be like one dimension that would be factored into uh, the classification, right? And we're kind of drawing, okay, th these are the, the different factors that this is that this given uh, road uh, is measured on. And then what are some typical treatments that would be applied to that situation and drawing lines between those things. Mm -hmm. Not saying that this is definitely going to happen if your road looks like that or like that, but this is the starting point and then kind of developing from there. Is I mean, the, it, you know, go ahead. It, it, go ahead it may work on the other side too. Just at some point when something gets too narrow and too greeny, planty, fuzzy, curb free or whatever there's an implicit expectation that it's never going to be a bus there. It's just not an appropriate environment for a bus for somebody to then come along and say, I'm going to plonk down some, you know, half a million square feet of something. And I'm going to want a bus. Uh, yeah. 
So I'm thinking, about are you talking just about public transit busing, or are you talking about school buses? Most, I was mostly talking about transit buses. School buses are a whole other thing. I mean, schools are where schools are. But if, if people are actually talking the, or walking the talk of using transit to get places, you know, you, you have to average more than five miles an hour. And, and, and you know, when you're sharing your, your space with bikes and, 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 you know, all kinds of other things, it's, it's not conducive to making good transit times. If I can just follow up, the reason I raised this was not about transit. It was about non-roadways. In other words, the, the, the um, uh, bike trail, yeah. uh, the rail trail, and the um, uh, planned or conceived um, connection to Newton over 128. Mm -hmm. And is that part of this comprehensive planning process? I would say it is because we also have some, not many, but there are a few pathways that also are interconnecting neighborhood pathways that are used, I'm sure, quite frequently by pedestrians to get from point A to point B to not have to walk around something. Right. Um, so I think those two things would also be included because it's about pedestrian mobility, bike mobility, mm -hmm. and car mobility. Yeah. Right. And so complete streets, it doesn't quite capture Yeah, no, that's streets. fair. Yep. Yeah, it's like that's all I was saying. pedestrian network. Yep. Layer of yep. that. And that's a piece of that. Yep. Okay, good. Which this technical um uh the the TR is that going to help the potentially what we're going to do for sidewalk management? I think that's the goal. So I think what, what a conversation came up last time that I thought was really astute, which is like when do we need when do we need sidewalks on both sides of the roads? When do we need sidewalk on one side of the road? And it was like, well, what is it connecting to? And how is it being used and how do we classify it? And we didn't really have a good answer for that. And I think that that's what sort of opened up this bigger conversation that I think is helpful. I think also as we've only just really started dipping our toes into like having bike lanes, let alone separated bike lanes and how they interconnect, because right now a lot of them just sort of go into Shero, right? Because you don't have that interconnectivity. So kind of figuring out where those interconnection points are, what are we missing, and then how do we develop plans to connect them into that network. Um, but yes, I'm hoping that that will sort of say that, you know, I think we talked last time about the neighborhood roads, and I have 250 um, basketball hoops that are in the public way right now that would indicate that people feel very comfortable in the street on a regular basis because they're playing basketball there, which would lead me to think that someone could safely cross the street from their house to the opposite side of the road to get on a sidewalk. So a, a local road would be a, you know, a candidate for, right. you know, this or a minor collector could be, but a major collector should have the, uh, a sidewalk on both sides or we've, whatever it may be. We've talked about like the roads, like um, Edgewater Drive has sidewalks on both sides, but Dedham Ave doesn't, right? Like there's yeah. 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 not... Yeah. Synergy there. Yeah, there uh, Minneapolis has a road classification document. Um, it's very good, and the, the streets look somewhat similar, some of them to ours. And um, so I suggest you look there for, like, you know, they, they have a, that picture of what a street would look like when it's done. And this is a, you know, a neighborhood greenway uh, that has, you know, buck outs on either side, but, you know, it narrows the entrance to the road, and it looks like our roads, and it's a good document to look to see, like, you know, this is what we would develop in the plan. Well, the difference between the application, yeah. classifying the yeah. streets. Yeah, the difference is they get to build it as it, you know what I mean? Because their infrastructure is newer, so they're building it as they want it, as opposed to us, or we're going back and yeah. fixing it, it the way it looks pretty simple. It, yeah. It, you, you look at it. No. One okay. caution on sidewalks is if you put a sidewalk in on a road that doesn't have it, you're affecting private reality in a really deep way. So what's interesting is, and I'll say this in my history now with the town, we are finding that the neighborhoods that don't have sidewalks are asking for sidewalks. So I would say people have moved, I will use um, the country way area as a good example. Yeah. They are calling us and asking us for more connectivity and sidewalk because this is just sort of my perception that during the pandemic a lot of people moved to Needham who might have lived in more urbanized areas for the backyards and having the amenities but now they want that physical amenity of being able to either walk to a place or walk around their neighborhood and they don't have that there so we're actually getting more requests from people who don't have sidewalk to add it than what we have capacity in order to maintain. Fully understand that and I'm not arguing yeah. that. What I'm saying is when you propose that 
there are going to be many people who are adversely affected yeah. or feel that they are. Yeah. And we just need to be very prepared for that and make sure that we deal with that in a responsive, meaningful way. Yeah. We also have areas where there are like a side, like every other property has sidewalk and then the other yeah. half of this properties don't have sidewalks. So you don't I have live on a street with a sidewalk is discontinuous. Yeah. So in my particular instance, if you decided to put sidewalks on both sides, I'd have almost no setback. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I understand that. And if that's what a decision were made to do, I'd certainly live with it, but it would affect me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not atypical, or mm -hmm. I mean, everybody on my side of the street's like that. Yeah. So. I mean, I think that, you know, that, that along with the, you know, the education, and I love the statistic of what is it, is it 170, how many miles, 130 miles, 170 miles of sidewalk in Needham. And it's just, that's just not sustainable. So there's, there, there needs to be some sort of, you know, strategy, you know, to figure out how we can, in order to give people some, we need to kind of figure out where we can decommission others. And I think that's, but that, but to your point, we need to, how we do that is, is, is crucial. And a good example of what can happen is when we propose to eliminate unnecessary streetlights. Yeah. Uh, there was a very, very uh, unhappy group of folks. And part of that was not understanding that streetlights are just light intersections and lampposts do something quite different. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when people's lives get affected, they get edgy. It's true. So I think that's why we had talked about, you know, can you find a way to make it more as you're trying to figure out, like, if we have a 50 year backlog in sidewalk, can you prioritize those who want to participate in the process over those who don't want to participate in the process? Well, you also have the public who uses those streets who have a stake, but not property on that street. And that's a legitimate stake. So. Sure. All right. Yeah. So, um, Anything else that uh, on the summit? Hearing none. Um, any other issues um, that are that, that weren't on the agenda? But I didn't have any. Um, but um, so I didn't anticipate any. Just special. a question. The agenda has this attachment thing, but that, that's an old um, relic. It right? is. Yeah. yeah. That, is, okay. that was the. I think that was yeah. the, the, the first, first paper that we used yeah. to inspire. I think it oh. might have been attached to the minutes, or it was put into the minutes. Okay. I believe. But yes, that's a good point. Um, perhaps we can. Well, it no, that, it's fine. I just want, want to know if I missed something. No, no, that was, I think that was just from, yeah. the, from the previous okay. evening. So uh, if there's nothing else, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Mr. Handel, second. 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 All right. We have to do a roll call. Uh, Paul Mota? Yes, Aye. Tim Bulger? Aye. James Goldstein? Aye. Mo Handel? Aye. Duncan Allen? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we have unanimous um, vote to uh, adjourn. I call it adjourned at 8.07 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Can I Thanks guys. Oh, thank you. Yep. Oh, it's a, um, a stand. It's beat up. No, it's a, you can have a credit card and an oh. ID. Oh. And a, like the only problem system. is if I lose my phone, it's like I've lost everything. Yes. <laughs> if I lose my phone, I've lost everything. <laughs>